Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. I'm Taylor Dolezal, a senior developer advocate at HashiCorp, where I focus on all things infrastructure, application delivery, and developer experience. Every week, we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with cloud native technologies. And you might notice where this, is, this seems like a rerun, but don't worry about that. Uh, Jason closed us off at the end of the year, and uh, we've got him back to kick things off this year. Should be fun. Uh, these people will build things, they will break things, and they will answer your questions. Uh, join us Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, today is a little bit later, but, uh, you know, uh, the rules were meant to be broken. Uh, this week, we have Jason Morgan and Catherine Paganini here to talk with us about the Cloud Native Glossary. This is an official live stream of the CNCF, and as such, it is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Uh, please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of the Code of Conduct. Basically, please be excellent to one another uh, and be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. With that, I'd love to turn it over to Jason and Catherine to kick off today's presenta uh, presentation. With that, uh, uh, the stage is all yours. Oh, okay. Well, hey, hey, folks, thanks, thanks so much for joining us. Um, so we're we're here today to talk to you about uh, actually not technology, or I guess only obliquely about technology, and a little bit about words and what they mean and how we define them. And Catherine, you wanna you wanna add anything? Sure. Yeah, um, maybe. So yeah, we're going to talk about the Cloud Native Glossary. And so I think we should probably get started about telling you a little bit about why, what it is and uh, why we created it, right? Um, so basically, it all started a little bit over a year ago uh, when uh, Jason and I launched the CNCF Business Value Subcommittee. Uh, so we were both co-chairs there. And the goal of the uh, committee is create is to create resources that explain uh, why and how cl uh, cloud native technology is such, has such a big impact on the business, right? And we want to explain that not for people without a technical background. And if you're wondering why, um, you probably notice that cloud native has become really mainstream or is becoming more and more main mainstream. More and more people are getting touched by it. Um, um, just think of a decision uh, of a company whether to migrate an application to a microservice architecture. That's a huge decision. It can cost millions of dollars, and it's not a decision that is made in the C-suite, uh, not, not in the IT department. The C-suite is also involved, right? So you have business people now uh, having to make those decisions, and they have to understand what the heck all this cloud-native stuff is, right? Um, so they need to get uh, up to speed. Um, but if you look out there, most content is really kind of targeted for technologists. And that makes it really difficult to understand if you don't have a tech background. So that's the why for the business value subcommittee. Um, so when we started, we were thinking, OK, before we can do any of that, right, we have to um, agree on how we're talking, how, how we want to talk about terms. Like if we're talking about service mesh, what does it mean, right? And uh, also, we don't want to be explaining all these things all over again, right? Like if we're writing an article about uh, containers, we don't want to be explaining what containers is and then in the next one, explain it all over again. So we realized, OK, uh, we need a glossary uh, we can refer to. And so although this all started like this thing we wanted to do before we could do what we actually wanted to do, <laughs> right? It became so much more. Uh, and while we were working on it, we really realized how valuable this resource could be. And so now to the glossary. Uh, so the goal is really to explain cloud native concepts, technology, and approaches in very easy and simple terms. So we're using no 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 tech jargon, uh, no buzzwords, uh, trying to use real life examples. Um, something anyone can relate to, like anyone who uses a smartphone, who uses a laptop, Wi-Fi, all these concepts of something that that, that you can understand, right? And uh, turns out that explaining com complex concepts in simple words is really, really hard, right? <laughs> so it's really easy to fall back to industry terms, right? Like it, it's it, because that's how everyone talks about it. So it requires a lot of discipline, and. Uh, it is really incredibly rewarding too. Uh, at least uh, for me, like I had, or I have no technical background. So um, for me, when I started 
learning about this, I really, really struggled understanding it. Um, so and for me, like knowing that people now that are in that position have something they can kind of read and is easily and, access and accessible, that makes me really, really proud. So I'm really uh, glad we did this. Um, and yeah, Jason, do you want to add anything to that? No, not a, not a ton, Catherine. Like, so Catherine nailed it, right? Like we, you know, we started this business value meeting and we probably had like 20 folks on and like, whether you're a marketing person, a salesperson, like me, I've been, been doing like engineering for about 20 years. Well, engineering maybe is a stretch, but I've been doing computer work for about 20 years. And, you know, we just didn't, we didn't agree. We were all using words in different ways. And it's like, oh, wow, this isn't like, this isn't viable. Uh, so let's, Let's define stuff. And um, and yeah, I hope folks like check it out. So they posted the links now in the chat. Um, post some links in the chat. There's a uh, a website, and that website's powered by Git Repo. And we'll talk about all that as we go. But please check it out. Yeah, yeah, Taylor. I've been I'm a button presser. <laughs> <laughs> Professional, you know, an expert. Please don't try like, this at home. Like George Jetson. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it just, yeah, hopefully not a, a big road button in most cases. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. It's, it's really helpful to be able to have a glossary and to not gloss over the, the details and the finer points of these things, uh, I must say. Uh, it's, I think that it'd be helpful too for when trying to describe to friends and family members kind of like what you do, you know, now there's, now there's a resource for some of those terms and some of those things. So thank you. Thank you both so much for really kicking this off and uh, for, for making this happen. Uh, with that, I'd love to ask uh, 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 both of you: Can we can we take a little bit of a uh, tour through the glossary? Oh yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love that. Do you mind if I if I share a screen? Not at all. All right. So I've got my handy dandy uh, laser pointer. Uh, Dra Drothamel. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that name. Uh, but for and not just for you, but for anyone, right? Like, come check it out. We desperately want help. Right, so there's about 50 terms in here in in English, and th thank you, Daniel. Um, there have been about uh, there's about 50 terms in here today in English, and one, you know, we'd appreciate folks to just review individual definitions, and if you like it or don't like it, you know, leave us a, a comment. Well, maybe don't leave an, an issue if you like it, but leave an issue or send a PR if there's things that you need that you think need fixed. Or if you want to define a new term, create an issue, come in here, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But we would we would absolutely love your help. So with, without all that talking, if you go to glossary.cncf.io, you'll see this page. So this is our, our little welcome. It tells you what's going on, how to contribute, some acknowledgments about all the folks that have done done work to get, get us to where we are. And, um, and yeah, a little bit else. You can see we've got a style guide, which we can link to at the top. Eventually, there we go. Style guide, a little how to contribute guide. Um, and then on the left, there's definitions. So let's take, you know, let's take cloud computing, right? Like this was, I, I every time I look at a definition, I get like a little bit of like uh, flashback to what it was like to try and define this in the first place. Um, so for every definition, we go through and we talk about what type of thing it is, right? So is it a concept? Is it a technology? Is it, uh, I think we have a couple other things. I don't remember what, what all the terms are, but there's essentially a couple of categories which your definition may lie in. And then for each definition, right, to, to hit that target of, I can explain it to someone that is not currently, you know, it, it's not just for business folks, it's anyone that is not currently indoctrinated in the language of cloud native, right? Um, Sal, Sal, uh, I will answer that and I absolutely can't wait to ha have you help us with this. Um, but, um, you know, for each for each one, we basically drop it into three categories. What is the thing that we're talking about? What what is the intended problem space or the intended problem that we're trying to deal with? And then how does it help? Right, really simple. What's the thing? What's the problem? What does it do about the problem? Right. Um, and with that, we also are in the midst of building out a bunch of different a bunch of different languages. But I think Catherine, we're going to talk about that in a bit, right? I don't want to I don't want to spoil. <laughs> I don't want to spoil yes. our flow. So this is this is the essential path. And then every you can link to every individual definition, and then you can link to individual sections within the definition. So we've all got a little little clicky link thing if you want to go to that. That's the technical term, by the way, clicky link thing. <laughs> and back to you, Taylor. Awesome. 
Thank you so much. I really like that you have that ability to kind of capture feedback and, and kind of get a sense of, you know, uh, is there something we can improve here or is there something that we can get added? Um, one question that I have for you is uh, why is, is it open source? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, sure. I mean, like, first of all, we all know that technology is changing really, really fast, right? So having like a few people in charge of updating it would be like a huge burden, uh, first of all, like, and so by inviting community to help and become, that becomes a lot easier. So that's one reason. But more importantly, we really believe that um, the end result will be a lot better if people collaborate, right? So Jason and I wrote a lot of definitions here. But are these the best definitions? Probably not, right? Uh, I mean, we put a lot of thought into it. And we're probably more attached to some than to others, right? <laughs> As always. But I mean, there are a lot of people out there that um, that may have a better definition or can help improve the current one, right? So we really want this to be a living thing, something that grows and improves over time. And that's only feasible if you open it up to the community. And so open sourcing it was really like the right approach. Um, besides, uh, it's also a lot of fun, right? Um, people, you, you get to work with people all, all around the world, which is really exciting. And um, yeah, our community is still small, but we hope we can change that maybe today. <laughs> uh, and we hope to see it grow and get lots of engaged con uh, contributors. So we're, we really welcome everyone on the call today to join, right? Um, Jason, anything you would like to add? Um, uh, yeah, so sorry, I just want to say hi. Hi, Sim. Uh, no, I don't have it. I don't have a ton to add, right? Like the, the goal of the business. So we set up this business value committee and we're like, man, there's a ton of resources that you kind of need as you begin to address your market, whether it's for a project or for a company, right? And, you know, we'll, what we'd love to do is we'd love to generate, like as a group around the CNCF, we'd love to generate some content that's just reusable, right? And that uh, changes based on what people want, right? So I've got, we've got observability in here, right? And like, I was nervous to define observability, right? It's a property. And like, if you look at it, there's like a ton of Folks have a bunch of different definitions for what this is, right? And some people are really passionate. So what we need is we need we need to to be able to welcome uh, changes from folks in the community, right? Like everyone's going to be sharp on different things, and this can only really be authoritative if the community agrees on the definitions. And as you know, someone that's been in tech for a while is like, well, I think the best way to make to get a community, you know, crowdsource set of definitions is put it in Git and and go that way. Um, yeah. So that, that's all I have to add. Sorry, Taylor. Go ahead. Awesome. No, that's that's fantastic. And I think that it is nice to kind of be able to have that, uh, you know, oversight from from everyone and just kind of like uh, say, does this look good? I know that there was a lot of uh, I was at KubeCon um, uh, just just uh, at the at the end of this year uh, here in, in L.A. And I know that, that was something I went to one of the day zero events and uh, 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 talking about GitOps and just kind of those concerns and uh, GitOps Con. And uh, they were a lot of people were thrilled at the fact that there was that formal definition of what is GitOps, because I know that a lot of people had different ideas. And when we're able to all kind of uh, unify and agree on what something means, then we're added, we're, you know, that gives it that much more meaning. And then people are able to take that and build with that. So, again, you know. Uh, the words, uh, the the pen is mightier than the sword. These words have a lot of power, and it's helpful to kind of align on those things. So again, thank you. This is it's it's really nice to have that ability to connect with people in that way. Um, awesome. So uh, with that, uh, speaking about people and teams and kind of aligning on language at, uh, in in many cases, uh, why should someone contribute to the glossary? Would you say? Um, yeah. So and just before I, I, I see like people asking about Bengali and Urdu and so on. So we're going to go about that. So I'm really excited because I'm actually um, more excited about like those, those more uh, smaller languages, because I think that would be really, really cool to see that all uh, translated. So we're going to come back to that in a minute. But going back to your questions, why someone should contribute. So first of all, I really think it's really fun and rewarding, right? That you're really helping to build something that is useful for a bunch of people. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you get to interact with people around uh, the world. Um, and that is especially true for the people who are working on the localization team, because we have like a Slack channel where all the teams can interact as well. 
uh, it is also a really good way to get started with open source without having to code, right? Like you don't really need to code to do this uh, and it's still open source. Uh, of course you do need to understand the concept, right? Uh, but like, look, at, like, I don't have, I, I cannot code, but uh, still I'm part of this project, right? So um, if you wanted to do this, this is uh, basically your chance. Um, you also really learn a lot because as I mentioned, like explaining these things in simple words is really, really hard. So you're testing your own language, uh, your own knowledge, right? Like sometimes you think you know something until you have to really break it down. So it's a great, great exercise. And I, I think there's like a saying, isn't there like a saying about like if the, the ultimate test of verifying your knowledge is when you're able to explain it to a child or something like that. So basically that's very similar. Take a complex, uh, term and explain it to, uh, to someone in a way that someone with zero technical knowledge can understand. If you can do that, you really got it, right? Like if you don't, you're probably still kind of missing some little thing. So it's a really, really good exercise to test if you actually know what you think you know. Yeah, and then to, to expand, oh, I'm sorry, Taylor. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say to expand on that, when we talk about creating localized content in in the particular native language or the particular language that you you are comfortable with, right? Like so much technical content is like biased towards English and like it's got to be like it's hard in English, right, to, to operate if you don't have a good understanding of what these terms mean. And like if English isn't your first language, right, like having terms in your language defined by native speakers you know, who are, who are doing it in a way that's like culturally relevant to you is super valuable. So it's a great way to help, you know, one, if you're contributing English, great, do it. We, we would love it. And if you can help localize and build definitions for your language, right? Like you're setting up so many other people for success by doing it. So it's a, you're doing something good for your community by adding terms here. At least I, I believe you are. I think that's something that is is uh, it kind of you know when it, when it comes to localization and adding in all these languages, that's a great point, um, uh, Jason. Is the fact that it's uh, it's it has to kind of mean the same thing too. I would imagine, right? It's not it's not like a quick translation where you plug it in and oh, okay, all of the words are now in this in this native language. Um, it needs to be kind of tuned to capture the essence and the meaning of what is this thing, uh, whether it be a concept or something else. Uh, so I think that that's a, a, a mad respect to the team for being able to kind of think about that and work through that. And I think it's something that not a lot of people realize is that, you know, as you go through that, uh, you know, as you go through those language changes, you, you need to keep that in mind as well. So uh, really, really interesting. Um, cool, cool. One, one thing I'd add before we go on, we got really lucky early on. Um, Leonardo Murillo, is that how I say his last name, Catherine? Uh, so Leonardo Murillo yeah. like helped us, helped us kind of just be like, yo folks, you need to be sure that you are focused on making it accessible to other languages. And like, he just, he, he set the stage for our ability to, you know, have this site and have all of the glossary terms be, you know, think about localization at the absolute start. And so we're really thankful for, for the early work that he did to, to set us on the right path. That's fantastic. It's uh, there's there's nothing like you know measuring twice and being able to cut once in that uh, in that aspect for sure. <laughs> uh, I did I did see one question come in uh, from Almas. Uh, so is this glossary related to general knowledge in software development or mostly related to cloud uh, cloud native items? Um, and then uh, I can read the part B of that question as well in a sec. Yeah, we're we're folk. It's cloud native glossary, so we're shooting for cloud native terms. But there's some stuff in here that's not, you know, cloud native specific. Cluster is defined. I think we have, yeah, we have bare metal machine defined. So a lot of these things are are general. But you know, in you know, we're starting with the lexicon of cloud native terms. Awesome, awesome. Uh, the next question uh, in in the, in the part B of that question was how friendly is it towards people who are familiar with software development but in uh, different fields or stacks. Uh, example being uh, this person is a back uh, back end developer trying to learn DevOps, Kubernetes, etc. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it. Hopefully, it's really friendly, and if it's not, raise an issue, right? So if you get into a term and you're like, "This doesn't make any darn sense," raise an issue and and let us know because it 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 ought to be really accessible to you. Yeah, the goal is awesome. that anyone can understand it, right? With no technical background, with different technical background, anyone, right? Because it's like, I mean, it's, yeah, it's 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 getting more and more, more and more people and companies are adopting it and more and more people are 
really kind of getting in touch with it. So that's the goal. So yeah, as Jason said, if you stumble about uh, across something that is not does not comply with that, which uh, I'm sure there are <laughs> uh, uh, a few, please, please do raise an issue or uh, improve it. And, and with that kind of talking about contributions, I did see a comment that came in and said, it would be great if we show how to contribute to uh, in, in native language on the stream. Um, one of the things kind of looking at that in a more general sense, uh, one question I have for you is how can people contribute and what kinds of contributions are you looking for uh, for this project? Uh, yeah, so I can, I can start. So one, go here, there's like literally like a how to contribute button right at the top which will talk through, talk through the process. The other second best place, and I don't know if you'd be happy to share the link, but if you could reshare the glossary link. So it's cncf slash glossary on GitHub. So I can't make that, make that any bigger, but uh, this is mention inclusive naming initiatives. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna finish what I'm saying and then I'll, I'll look at the questions. Uh, so here is the Git repo. Uh, you can see, well, one, the readme talks about how you get started. Right or how you get started with the the actual project, and then the um, the issues here. We've got like an issue template. So it so as you go in here, you want to raise an issue, and this this works from here. So again, if I if I'm here and I want to report an issue, it it brings me to create a new issue right away, and it actually gives it to you on the term. Um, but if you go into an issue and you create a new issue, we've got a bunch of issue templates that specifically talk about what language you're doing, and for all the folks that started talking about you know, how do I set it up for my particular language if it's not already in here? Well, we've got this one form to initiate a new localization team. And to be clear, audience members, if you want a stream specifically on how to set up a localization team and how to get started with your language, we can set that up. We don't have, we don't have the, per so we have, we had a new person come on as a maintainer and they're amazing and they're helping us do a great job with localization. Um, and I, I'm scared to say their name because I, I say it incorrectly um, too often, but it's Sioko. Sioko, is that right, Catherine? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> right. So, uh, so he's been he's been incredible, and we can do we can do one specifically on how how to get set up. But essentially, what we need is three folks per language, three three folks that that know and trust each other and are able to look over their definitions together right, and set approval and then go through the process of initiating a localization team for your language. If you have questions in the Slack, we have a localization channel where we can connect you with like-minded folks who speak the same language as you and, and start rolling to get you a localization team um, in your language. But sorry, I, 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 I strayed a bit just because I'd seen so much about localization. In general, you're gonna, you're gonna open an issue or you're gonna look at the particular content here under the content tab, we have the various uh, languages by language code. So assuming you're in English, because that's the only one that I contribute to, um, you know. So when I go in here, I go into English. I pick the I pick the particular thing, and then if I wanted to make a, a change, I could just, you know, create my own branch and uh, and actually um, I could create my own branch, and then I could actually you know make the changes that I want, submit a PR. You know, for every PR, you'll see. Um, right. So yeah. So for every PR, right. Assuming that this one's a good one, you'll get your little Netify, Netlify uh, link. So you can see the you can see the actual version of it as you go. So you can see your changes as you go. So it's a fairly like low stress thing. No one's gonna yell at you if you do something wrong, right? We're um, yeah, we're excited to we're excited to take any contributions you've got. And if you need help, go into the Slack. Thank you, Sal, for posting that. There's a glossary localizations. Uh, Slack channel on um, on the CNCF Slack. There's a glossary channel, right? If you need help, let us know. We're we're eager to work with you. And if you've never done anything in Git, we even have some guides to how to get started using Git, so you can do a PR, so you can raise an issue, all that stuff. Did I answer your question, Taylor? Absolutely. Right. And uh, and one thing I saw too, I kind of like that uh, that it has that following structure where it's glossary, and I can see gloss glossary localizations, and then glossary localizations, and then the actual languages that are being worked on. Um, so that's uh, that's that makes it uh, easier and easier to find as well. Um, cool. Awesome.
Uh, really like how you have things set up too with all of the GitHub issues and just trying to, it, you know, it clear, it's clear that you're trying to make that accessible and, and kind of uh, uh, straightforward in terms of figuring out how to route different requests and things and request, uh, not only request things, but actually file tickets and, and get some things added as well. But uh, awesome. Um, cool. The yeah. uh, and, and to everyone who's watching today, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the chat uh, where you're viewing this and uh, we'll be happy to answer things on that front as well. Um, I did have one other question for you. Um, you're you're also looking into translating the glossary. Um, how does that work, and how can people kind of join in the effort there? I know we talked a little bit about that, but uh, curious as to if you have a little bit more information on that front. Yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, like uh, we're super excited to have like people come, and I'm also super excited to see people now in the chat as well, because it's like that is really really dear to us, and we really want to get this effort going. Um, and so as Jason already mentioned, right, like there is a lot of content on cloud native out there uh, in English, but most of the people in this world are not native speaker, English native speakers, right? So it's like, I mean, imagine learning cloud native concept in a foreign language, especially if it's not like you're not super familiar with it. It's twice or three times as hard, right? So really making um, making the glossary accessible to anyone anywhere is really something that we really want to help do, right? So um, we do have the glossary set up to have multiple languages and we have teams you may have seen already a, a little bit in this in the, um, in the GitHub. We have currently teams working on translating it into Korean, Hindi, Portuguese, Italian, and sp Spanish, and actually German just, they just kind of had like a little group today. So, um, that is really excited. We have uh, two volunteers from Nepalese. If anyone uh, interested in Nepalese uh, here, <laughs> please um, join. Um, and uh, five of these teams have committed to try to get uh, the 10 first terms translated by uh, KubeCon NA in October. Um, and have that would be like the first mini versions of the glossary. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can, we can get that going. Um, so yeah, if anyone here is interested and we saw like some interest here, um, um, of joining a current glossary, uh, gl uh, localization team or creating a new one, hop on the channel, the glossary localization channel, the, um, um, channel that Sal, um, um, shared before. And uh, yeah, just, just let us know. Um, as Jason mentioned, we are looking for three volunteers per language at least. But if you don't have someone like, I mean, there may be three people separately like watching this now and wanting. So hop on the channel and maybe you can find each other or we can try to connect you if, if we know anyone. So, so hop on that channel if, if you're interested. And it doesn't really matter if your language is spoken by less than a million people or a billion, right? Like it, if, if you have three volunteers and if you're passionate about this, demystifying all these concepts in your native language, you qualify, right? So uh, so please join us. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna share um, all the um, the channels uh, again. And I think like we also have, we published a blog post yesterday uh, where you can find all the information uh, as well with which channels to join and so on. Anything you would like to add, Jason? Anything I forgot about? No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? We need, you know, we need three folks per language, right? Like our goal is not to have Catherine, myself, be, be folks that gate contributions from languages, from other languages, right? We want everyone, every language group to, to self-govern, self-defined terms, you know, set, set their own names for the terms. Like we don't want you to just, I don't want you to go translate abstraction into Italian, right? Like I want whatever the appropriate Italian, you know, view of abstraction is, right? Whatever their, whatever their term is, right? I'm sure they have a, I'm sure you have an Italian word. Uh, I was going to make a joke there, but I decided no. Uh, but, you know, whatever it is, we want them to be able to use their own, their own wording, right? Not just abstraction, the Italian version, right? But instead, you know, you're set up for it. And in general, just stay out of your way as you, as you get to doing it. Um, and yet Slack is the best place to get in the loop. Absolutely agree. 
uh, I, I did see one thing come in uh, that said uh, from Sal, uh, consider coordinating this uh, with a CNCF KubeCon hackathon and could potentially get uh, a bunch of valuable localization commits from a group of developers. I, I, I agree. And that's, uh, that's, that's the fun thing about open source, right, is being able to kind of say, hey, I think we could do, we, we could make this better. We could do this thing. And, uh, and to just kind of throw that out there and, and, and see it come together or work towards making it happen. So uh, I agree. Uh, that I, I'd really enjoy seeing that. Uh, I, I wasn't aware of the glossary myself until uh, un, until you know until January this year. So really excited to see that this exists. Um, I, I I did have a couple questions as well, kind of around the the project and just like the consumption of some of these terms. Um, do you know if there's a way to uh, like download this to PDF or I could see it looks like there's there's fuzzy search on the site. Are there are there any thoughts around um, other things in terms of not just localization specifically, but any other ways that might help with accessibility? or sharing this around or, or kind of any thoughts on um, some of the technical components or, or pieces behind the site that, that y'all have thought of or, or have any come up? Yeah, so our first version of the glossary, so we released this originally at KubeCon EU, right? And I think we had 25 terms or 10 terms, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Uh, and our initial version was a PDF and we dropped that <laughs> as quickly as we possibly could because it was, <laughs> it, it just, it goes stale fast. It doesn't auto update and stuff. If listen, if folks, you know, here there's actually a link to view and download the PDF version. If you want to get it, I'm not sure that it auto generates, but if if this is something, everything in this project, if you have an interest in seeing it be a certain way, please please help us and get involved. And we we want to we want to get it as long as we can build something, you know, like with PDFs. If we can build a thing that auto generates a PDF so that it's always current when someone clicks a link, great. Right, we'd love to. We'd love to see something like that. And, I, and again, I haven't even dug into the PDF function enough to know whether it's a static one or it's a new one every time. Uh, but, but anyway, so uh, it's static. So there we go. And it's if, old. If it still has the twenty-five first one. So uh. yeah. So, so there, that's an area that could use some improvement, right? So if you have if you have a, an interest in it, then we'd love to get your help so that we can we can make it look the way you want it to look. Um, I saw someone asked about you know, the inclusive naming initiative, right? And I actually just Googled it while we were sitting around. Like, and it's another one. So because the definitions are open source, right? If you see, if you see some language that is not correct or not appropriate, right? Like, let us know. Well, it's, I can, I can tell you personally in English, Catherine and I will prioritize. And it's like, hey, can we please remove this term and replace it with this one? Because this one sucks or is bad for some reason. Damn, right? Like, we'd love to... Love to get those things fixed. Um, and I saw my my tool, my tool. Uh, essentially, you need you need three folks who speak the same language, who are interested in developing some terms. And honestly, if you have that, go over here, raise a new issue, and build a new uh, new localization team. And when you do it, it gives you this handy dandy checklist of all the stuff you need to do, right? Um, so there's there's a bunch in there. Um, yeah, yeah, if you if you don't have three yet, uh, join the Slack channel. Well, join it anyways, right? But um, there may be someone there who also wants to join a team and doesn't have uh, doesn't have their three uh, volunteers there yet. So I think like join the Slack channel if you're interested, for sure. And yeah, like once you have the three, then you, you do the issue. But we'll we'll try. I don't know. We we cannot promise to uh, connect you with uh, uh, all three, but we're gonna do whatever we can, like if we are in the next live stream, like with the Nepalese one, I know they have two. So, <laughs> so we'll try to uh, um, let people know. Um, so, so other people can just, just join you. Excellent. I, I, uh, I, I do like, uh, again, how it's, you've, you've made this really accessible to be able to add things and, and kind of ask for things and work through adding to this glossary. I think one, uh, selfishly, I'd, I'd love to see at some point in time and, and love to, to pitch that at some point is uh, uh, pronunciations for things and then in, in specific oh. languages. So we could, and, and maybe for cube CTL, cuddle, uh, control, <laughs> uh, we can have a randomizer to just you know say one of those at some point in time too. <laughs> Yeah, we avoid we avoid politics, religion, and uh, and pronunciation of kubectl in the <laughs> <at all> costs. <laughs> uh, uh, it's I it's, I I I bought uh, kubecuddle.com, so at some point in time we need to make that something fun. Uh, <laughs> Got I'll it. Talk with yep. a couple people about that, but uh, awesome, awesome, uh, wonderful. 
Well, we'd love to open it up to uh, anyone that has any questions. Otherwise, uh, are there any other uh, things that are, are good to kind of keep in consideration with the glossary or uh, are, are there any things that y'all have your minds on uh, accomplishing within uh, this first quarter or, or kind of like any immediate concerns that you might want to share or talk about uh, before we start to close things out? I think the focus for us right now is uh, we feel like we have like the basis there, the foundation right now. We really want to find more contributors, right? So that's that's now, um, yeah, we want it to really kind of grow and improve. Uh, so that's our focus now. Um, and then like now building as well, like the localization teams, right? Like we, we have uh, several teams getting started, but of course nothing is there yet because it's just started. And so I think the focus of the next half year is really getting those mini versions uh, started. And I can't wait to see like the little drop down in the languages and, and seeing all that. That like, yeah, it's, it's li really looking forward to that for sure. Yeah, no, no doubt our priority from now until KubeCon is get as many languages as possible to have 10 terms so that up in here or somewhere you can just change the language, right? And go go to what's what's appropriate. You know, that being said, if you're out there and you have some definitions, I would I would love to get some new definitions or to get some of the existing ones updated. Right. But our Catherine and I's main focus is helping the localization teams as much as possible. So, uh, so show, show, show we are choose. Geez, I'm so sorry. I, I said your name. I'm almost certainly I, I said your name wrong, but, uh, they're saying that we have three members. Now we need to form a team in Slack and then create an issue on GitHub. So what you do is come into the Slack and just talk about like, talk, just make sure that everyone, everyone joins the glossary channel and the glossary localization channel in Slack. And then yeah, go into the glossary and raise an issue to, uh, raise a new issue to initiate uh, a new localization team and get started. Like we're, to be clear, right, we're early days and we're building out the localization process. So we'll need help to get, you know, uh, <laughs> to get, to get the, you know, I don't expect the whole process to be entirely seamless, but we'll do everything we can to get you ready to start, start writing terms in your own language. Yeah, and actually there is, uh, if, if you go on the Slack channel, there is like the meeting notes, uh, Seo Kwon, who is our uh, maintainer who manages the whole process. Like he, he is, he's the person who has done like a lot of the docs localization for Kubernetes. And so he has created all the steps and the processes that we need for uh, the glossary. Uh, and so you can read all in there. We're also first, like he's trying to do everything for Korean right now testing it so a lot of things may not go through right away so we're testing that and once we uh, confirm that it's all working it's going to be the process as jason said like it's early on so we're still like we still have to do our first one so K korean is our kind of guinea pig uh, guinea pig right now and um so yeah there are a lot of things that can be done but uh yeah you, you find all that information in there so it's and, all and work in progress and don't let any of the, the process things stop you, right? Like if you grab a Google Doc and you and the people that you're working with can begin defining terms in a way that makes sense, ideally have that format in general for uh, for most of these, these, um, these definitions that includes what it is, problem it addresses, how it helps. That would go a long way. Make sure that you check out the, the style guide and, you know, an appropriate style guide for your language would be great. But again, you can start the you can start doing these definitions yourself, and then as the process moves out, you've got a bunch of them ready to go that y'all can review and submit um, submit yourselves, right? As as we get going. Yeah, and just uh, talking to style. So we haven't updated that for a while. The how to contribute in style guide. So that's my priority in the next two weeks or so uh, to update that. So it's going to be more. There are going to be more details. So check that again, and. Um, yeah, just as a recommendation, I wouldn't start right away with uh, GitHub, right? Because it's like, ideally, you're going to uh, collaborate and like tweak each other's uh, things. So the way we started, we worked on the terms before we added them on GitHub was a Google Doc. It's just like a lot easier because you're going to be um, changing and updating. And, and that's like very cumbersome on, on Google uh, and, and GitHub. And once you have something you're happy with, then you can put it on there. Because it's it's a very collaborative process and back and forth uh, in general. So, um, I think GitHub is kind of good when you already have a really good sense of what you wanna <laughs> what you wanna add, and then you can tweak it from there. But yeah, 
Excellent. Awesome. I did see uh, uh, Jonathan mentioned uh, YouTube video cube control, the definitive pronunciation guide. Absolutely agree. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that we'll all start to see things uh, uh, drop on, on that front. And uh, uh, wonderful. Thank you both so much for, for really just uh, educating us today on the glossary, how to get involved, some of the things that are coming up with it. And uh, and really just uh, exciting to see that it's going to continue to kind of change shapes and uh, add definitions and really help people out with understanding understanding and, and being able to unite and align on, on uh, you know, what these what these things mean. Um, cool. With that, uh, I, I didn't see too many more questions come in. If, if they do, I'll, I'll be sure to raise them up here uh, as we start to close out. But really would like to turn it over to, to both of you. Do you have any uh, parting words of wisdom or uh, anything that you would like to say in terms of kind of closing things out here? Uh, well, I mean, for like, I'll just get started. <laughs> so for me, it's just like, we really, really want people to get involved. So join us. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy having, um, you know, like, inter like working with all of you, like all the community, like people from all around the world. I think that's super exciting, right? Like, like, I don't know. So again, it's a lot of fun. It's really rewarding when you see it up and up and uh, running. If you're localizing it, you're really doing a huge favor to the community and your country. Uh, so yeah, I, I hope I hope you see uh, to see you all on uh, first on the Slack and then uh, seeing all these uh, GitHub PRs coming in. I'd, I'd add to that, right? If you like the glossary, if you've been to the to the landscape lately, the cloud native landscape, and you've seen this hmm. this landscape guide button now, so there's a little guide. If you like if you like things like this, where you start to to explain some of these terms, you start to make an impact on cloud native stuff. But with without an exclusive focus on the on the tech or on coding, right? If, if these things are interesting to you, come check out the CNCF Business Value Committee. We we do some neat stuff. If you're if you have something you're pra you're passionate about or a project that you're you're interested in doing that isn't necessarily like isn't necessarily scoped to one thing in the in the CNCF or is is maybe not so not so code or, or tech exclusively focused. We'd love to. We'd love to help you make your idea a reality. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining the latest episode of Cloud Native Live today. Uh, it was really great to hear from Jason and Catherine about the Cloud Native Glossary. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I started undefined, but now I feel a lot more defined in my understanding of uh, what the glossary is looking to do. So thank you both very much. Uh, we really love the interaction and questions from everyone in the audience. So thank you so much on that front. Uh, next week, we will be joined by Diego Braga, who will present on from zero to production in less than one hour with Cradio Platform Ops. And with that, thank you for joining us today, and we will see you soon. Thanks, everyone. See you around.